in the palm of the gentle rolling hills of New Zealand's North Island lies Te Wairua, which in Māori means long water and is named after the river that runs through the town. Here, visitors can trace a path from the blue jewel of Lake Waikaremoana along the river to the soft sanded shores and surf tides of Whakamahia. Weaving through the pristine views of native New Zealand as you make your way to the quietly progressive town of Wairua. Sought after by anglers from around the world, the Wairua's waters are teeming with aquatic life from fly fishing in one of the district's many rivers to towing lines through the Wairua River as it makes its way out to the South Pacific. Catching trout, crayfish, marlin or memories along the way. But for the truly adventurous among us who want a taste of life as it used to be, there are an array of hunting cabins scattered about the land. Like this one, perched atop game-filled valleys and plateaus. Families can enjoy the tranquility of nature and maybe even find dinner at the same time. It can be hard to imagine a better quality of life made any more effortless than in this frontier town. But if it's an evening's worth of excitement that you are after, the recently revitalised Gaiety Theatre, now complete with a new state-of-art sound system, is the perfect place to catch the latest movies or take part in one of the town's many events organised by the flourishing community of creatives that live here with open mic nights, love it or lump it cookouts and live music shows. There is every opportunity to show your talents or sit back and enjoy the show like a local. Kiri and Winiata are two local musicians that are never far from a guitar. Hey, I'm Kiri Gilbert and we're at the saloon and this is I'm Winiata Kuanaki and we're cousins. Wairo is more a musical, it's a real musical place with all the families, they're real musical here. Knows. So when their kids come through, there's probably no chance they won't be musical because it's sort of they're surrounded by it all the time. But there's a lot of musical families in Warrell. Would have been growing up watching all of them, you know, from a young age and sort of carries on through the next generation than that. The family, I mean family, um, or, or my brother, because um, I used to always follow what he did, so if he like wore Nikes, I wore Nikes, if he's done this, I'll do that. And what keeps us here is how we were born here. And we just want to help our, our youth. Everyone really just want to help people do anything that they do music and be like, you know, just losing weight and stuff like that. <laughs> when my air was made strong by the hands of the Almighty, we forward in this generation. Students here are encouraged to explore their creative talents and some even go on to become masters themselves. All of their talent is cultivated by not only the families that live here but also by the schools with the Wairua College offering classes in traditional wood carving, music and art. Trevor Galvin is one such encourager of the local artists and artisans. Kia ora, my name is Trevor Galvin and I'm a, an art teacher at Wairua College. Been doing just strictly for kairo or Māori carving for the last four years. Māori art, we've been doing those for, seems to be centuries here. This, this is just a drop in the, in the bucket. Well, I've always been interested in wood carving and when I did my training, I was lucky to have a lecturer who was um, who's one of our leading artists in, in New Zealand, leading Māori artists. If people wanted to come through Wairoa and wanted to um, view Māori artworks other than just carving, then um, they, would, they would need to get in touch with the information centre. Some people just by word of mouth know to come here or to get in touch with people like Broughton Johnson, other carvers, and they will take them to a marae. So there's a big one by the door there. That boy hand stained his carving. 
Now, what I mean, hand stained, he pulled the stain onto his hand and, and instead of using a brush and put, rubbed that into their board. I look upon our card meeting houses as, as our um, art galleries. Matariki is a celebration of giving thanks to the harvest that has just come and we celebrate the, the foods that are grown before that season. The Matariki Festival is the Māori New Year. It's also called the Seven Sisters or the Pleiades or Sparrow's Line. That, that's all sort of the cluster of stars that, that are symbolic of Matariki. It's also an indication of um, get ready for, for what's about to happen as well. It's a positive festival that Māori have celebrated recently and Ngāti Kahananu is one of the first iwi to celebrate the Matariki Festival. Uh, so the, the band That Stars It, our Wairau College boy band, they've performed at Tua the Matariki. The song that they did was called Ko Wairau Tōku Awa. The beginning of the song talks about the Tāngaporo and the Tonga Pūrō is significant to voices of the sea, voices of the forest. So it was like that was symbolic of the environment calling out to them using the Tonga Pūrō. But it's not all play here. One such example of that great Kiwi work ethic is the Baines family out at Makapua Station. Right on Kora, Baines. My wife Mark. We uh, bought this place 21 years ago. Pretty rough block. We've been developing to free up a bit of money. We've uh, we've always shown our own sheep, so uh, you know it can be quite expensive to get a shearing gang and rousies in twice a year. So uh, we've been shearing our own sheep. It is a family affair. Yes. <laughs> yes. Teach them young. Yes. Well, teach them how to stop and go and get out of the way. Do as they're told. <laughs> Over the years we've taught young ones, all well, the well, kids are learning, and they're away at school, they're very home mates to shear, uh, to learn to shear. Teaches them a lot of discipline, uh, getting up in the morning and being here on time, on the board, ready to go with all their gear ready, starting on the dock, finishing on the dock, and not just lolling around. When it's um, time to work, everyone has to be on the job. That's a real team thing. It's not the only family-run business here. Te Kapu Apiaries, run by Keith and Joe Pelgrim, use their bees to work with local farmers and keep crops healthy while supplying them and us with fresh local honey. In fact, they believe so strongly in their community, they offer a pay-what-you-take service. After all their work, it's time for a good old-fashioned meal and some live music. So it's over to the saloon, where cutlery is served in mugs, the food is homemade and the music is homegrown. One of the biggest highlights of the town can be found nestled into the east end of Marine Parade. There you will find an eclectic block by the river now known as the Gaiety Theatre. It was the vision of one humble man by the name of Jeff Hole, who, with the overwhelming support of the community, managed to construct what is considered by many to be the beating heart of Te Wairua. Yeah, the Gaiety was part of, um, it was a, a big part of the community when I was a kid. Um, my parents actually had their first um, dates, if you like, in, in the theatre at a ball. So I guess my association with it has, you know, dates back to then. Um, and when I moved back to town, the theatre was just a boarded up wreck, really, and the shops attached to it were as well. And the whole thing really captured my imagination and, and wouldn't go away. Really. I, I couldn't leave it alone. And um, I didn't really know anything much about theatres at all, except as a as a patron, it ran for nine years. It ran as a, as a non-profit community theatre. When I bought it, uh, it was very hard to fix the theatre itself up, um, and it was a huge amount of money 
by my terms. And um, a lot of people in town helped out financially, a lot of people helped out as volunteer workers, and we put the thing together, you know, and, uh, and got it going on a fairly small amount of money after like, six years of being recessed. The local council are out behind it. The technology now that's been put into the theatre is um, fantastic stuff, and the theatre has really been reinvented. And um, it's a you know a credit to the town, really. Imagine a land where no capital inflow or outflow restrictions apply. A stable, friendly country ranked second on the planet by the World Bank for ease of doing business. A nation classed as having the lowest perceived levels of public sector corruption. Too good to be true? Ever heard of Aotearoa, the land of the long white cloud, most commonly known as New Zealand, is such a place. With a minimum capital investment of 100,000 New Zealand dollars, you may be eligible for a New Zealand Entrepreneur Work Visa. Or if you are aged 65 or less and have 1.5 million New Zealand dollars to invest in New Zealand for four years, you may be eligible for residency as an investor. And for those aged over 65, 10 million New Zealand dollars invested in New Zealand for three years may be sufficient for you to gain New Zealand residency. With two islands in the world's first commercial bungee jump, we know about leaps of faith and Te Wairua is the perfect place to land a new home or business. Along with one of the longest summer periods in the nation, Te Wairua has a wonderful climate and is populated by authentically friendly, talented people who are blessed with some of the world's most beautiful lakes, beaches and ancient hot springs. Here you can buy yourself a house mortgage free for the same price as a deposit on a house in Auckland. Then it's time to eat freshly picked fruit or go offshore fishing, trout fishing, hunting, golfing, swimming, trekking and generally relaxing in the 4,118 square kilometres of Te Wairua. All in all, Te Wairua is a welcoming community with one question. Where are you?